All right, so this video is um, for the IT tool ones, the online video for. Let me just step back on the forum already. So let's see. Here we are, um, the week before spring break. Um, this is just the online part of the class video. I'm just going to go over a few tweaks I did to the project, and then I'll go over how I did my posting. So the the description the user flows, the link to the build, and the embedded project. So you can play it here in um, right in your Moodle posting, or um, you can click the link and go to the um, HIO page. So let me start from the beginning. All right, we're in Unity. This was left over from... Um, last class, so the only things I did was add the explosion. Um, so one of the students asked for that, and it was pretty quick to do, so I can go over that. And I swapped around left and right clicking. Um, so let me click play. And everything is as is. The time destroy is normal. The only thing now is that if you click to destroy, it kind of plays an explosion. Or if you clear out the button, it does an explosion. And this was just a very default particle system. I didn't change or anything, so you can mess around with it and sprint free to make it more interesting and dynamic um, than just the basic white little particles. Um, but I'll go over, and that allowed me to, uh, I think I did a quick enumerator. Um, no, I didn't have to do that. So good, I didn't have to introduce that yet. That's good. All right, and I also swapped around left. Now it's left click to draw, right click to destroy. So let me start at the top. All this was from class, except here we have this public game object explosion. Um, so I'm just going to move down the script. I think I'm actually going to hit the explosion last. Um, so I'll start here. If input get mouse button down, this used to be um, a right click. I just switched it from a 1 to 0 to a left click so that when you're um, interacting with the clock, you can just left click just like the rest of the user interface and everything else here is the same. Um, if you right click and you're not clicking on the user interface. Right. So this this is the delete method now. And it used to be a left click. All you did was switch the 1 to a 0. So now when you right click and you're definitely not interacting with anything on the interface, you can delete stuff. This was swapped around. This was um, if get mouse button up on 1 because I used to be drawing on 1. So this just says when you release, we reset that last click, click position. So that the first object that we paint on our paint stroke isn't just this wild, crazy size. So this is swapped to a 1, 2, 0. This here is swapped from a 1 to a 0. And I also added some stuff. So if we're not interacting with the user interface, which we covered this, and you're left holding or left dragging, we're only really painting when we're dragging. So this is left drag now. This checks. So this and... Are we left dragging and we are not interacting with something on the user interface? And I put this in as well. So I started painting over the clock while I was interacting with it. So this says that if your X position on the screen is more than 200 units, then we're going to go ahead and paint. So if I click play, I'm kind of making use of this thing down here. So if you notice as I'm moving about in this when it's sized at this size about 176 175 we're past the clock as i go less you see x is getting less as i go to the left where i'm kind of hovering over the clock and so notice my paint stroke stops there All right, and so that's because I said if your X position is less than 200, we're not going to paint. So anywhere over here, it's fine. All 
and notice uh, that the paint stroke stops at this border area which is now creating a big paint splotch here so I'm gonna have to do a check for that but notice I paint it's fine and I can stop at the border so I'm not painting over the clock when I'm trying to interact with it so I can still interact with the clock um, but I don't paint over it while I'm interacting with it. So this has introduced some little hiccup where the kind of creating this big blob when you come back on. But anyway, so this is at that mouse position 200. So that's why we have to be left holding. We have to not be interacting with the user interface. And we have to be greater than 200 on the X in the screen. So if I change the screen size, so notice... Um, that my paint stroke stops further out here. 200 has changed because it's smaller and it looks like I can't really get much bigger right now. But as it gets bigger and as you notice on the WebGL, your paint gets a little bit closer to the clock because our screen real estate's bigger. So I need to improve this code for um, the next um, Sprint 3. So anyway, these will be some of my features I'll be doing is, is fixing. Um, we have to test basically how big the screen uh, real estate is when we start and then do like a, a ratio and not just do like a finite number check like X is greater than 200. Um, and that is it. So that's how I swapped left and right click and basically the more both checks were down here. We're not interacting with the user interface and our mouse positions at a certain location. Um, and let me cover the explosion and then uh, just the build process and we're done. So when I say game object, uh, I'll get out of play mode for this. Go game object, um, 3D. Let me hunt out oh, effects. Here we go. Effects particle system. So I press the F key on it to zoom up a little bit. So this creates its own little entity game object, and it has this big component called the particle system. We'll cover this more in um, Sprint Three. But as I move it, notice it, it just has a, a location in the world, and um, it has its own kind of like timeline to simulate because it has to run over time kind of like an animation so if I stop it play it or restart it notice it's doing um, running its simulation if I reset the position put it in workspace zero we can see it here and if I click play um, Give a second. Here it is at world space zero, and it's just running, and I can move it around. So it's just shooting out, spraying these white particles. Very default behavior. We're not doing anything more than that. All right, so all I did was I took this particle system, and I just dragged it into my prefabs folder in my project view. So I made, I made a prefab of it. I made an external file. I copied it to disk, basically so that we can reference it later. No, nothing's changed, it's exactly like this. It's just a prefab, it lives outside of my game scene right now, all right? So when I said public game object and I added another reference called explosion, that's all I referenced it to. So if I come down here on my click detector, here's explosion, there's the particle system. And what's important to note, it really is that position is zero, zero, zero. It's zeroed out. So that whatever, wherever I spawn it and give it a location, it'll be spawned right at that spot. There won't be any offset position-wise. So we have this prefab. It's a basic default particle system. I have a reference to it as a public game object in my script. If I double-click on explosion and come down here, there it is. Um, so... What I'm doing here is, uh, see, I'm using it once here, and I think, where's the clear button? Okay, so this is, I think, simpler, um, or maybe are they the same? Now, this one has a, a timer connected to it. Well, actually, so does this. So maybe this one's um, easier to start with. This is the clear button right here. Cause this 
function. It used to be go through for each, go through each painted object that we created and do something to it. In this case, destroy the game object. This was the code, code as is before I messed with it this week. Now all I did here is I instantiated the explosion at the child's position. The child is a transform. Where we look at transforms when we hunt through um, the hierarchy of parent-child. We give it a default rotation. And then we set it uh, uh, a reference variable to it. So in this case, I'm using primitive. If you remember primitives up here, I'm using it when I actually paint, when I create painted objects and we connect it to this reference so that we can change its location and color, um, its parent and scaling. Uh, since we're here, I know that they've clicked the, the clear button when this method is run. That means they're not painting right now, meaning this reference variable is not being actively used in any way. I'm going to repurpose it. And so when I instantiate this explosion at the location of this child object, I'm going to delete, I'm saving a reference to it. Then that allows me to say, well, destroy this locally made, this runtime made instance of explosion one second later. I'm not destroying the file connection. I'm not destroying the public game object called explosion. I'm destroying the instantiated temporary object that's been created in our memory, in our RAM, copy of it, and I'm destroying it because we copy it over many, many times. And then I destroy it one second later. So that's why when I uh, paint all this stuff and I want to clear everything all at once, and I click clear, they all generate an explosion. Notice that all the explosions are out here. Let's see if I can pause it real quick. All right, I was able to do it. So we, we deleted everything that was underneath click detector and it created all these explosions, all these particle systems. I didn't bother when I instantiated them to put, make a, put them in as a parent, uh, put them into the click detector, but we can. But they all exist at the root of our hierarchy and they're all played for one second and then they're deleted. And that's what this destroy function is doing. Then if I go up to where I used explosion again, this is um, if we're right clicking and we're not interacting with the user interface, we're going to shoot a ray out through the camera, through the mouse position, see if we hit anything. If we do hit something and it's on layer 12, which is we know is a painted object, we're going to destroy what we hit. And then the same process, we're going to instantiate explosion at that location, position. In this case, that we have to call hit, because that's what we hit with our ray cast. And the hit is um, a different data structure that contains information of what we hit. One of them is the transform. So we have to say hit.transform.position. Instantiate it, set a reference to it, and then say, hey, destroy that referenced copy in a second later. So that's why when I paint something, I can right click and delete parts of it. And whatever I delete is going to create an explosion at its location and then disappear that explosion a second later. All right, that's it for coding. And so what I did was I saved my scene went to file build settings and one thing to note is that when I went to a sprint 2 project I'm in a different unity scene so I had to go find my unity scene here's my scenes and I dragged it in and I'll just delete it to show you that it'll create a new entry and then it used to be this was clicked on sprint 1 I clicked that off and I clicked on sprint 2 it was a different Unity scene. If you're still in the same Unity scene, don't worry about it. Just make sure whatever Unity scene you're in are currently saving that you want to build. That's what you have dragged in and clicked on scenes to build. Then we're going to build. And I've already done that. And I specified my build folder in my project. That's my project name. We can see it up here. And what happens is that um, if we already had a build in here, that's okay. It'll overwrite it. 
Um, and I took these three, the build template data. Oh, you want to test it? So we want to right click on index, open with Firefox. That's a web browser that lets you run this locally. So now I'm testing locally, see if there's any issues before I put it up. So the other thing is this, this AMPM, everything works fine. Testing out all my features. I'm really happy with it. All my user interface works. Everything's on the scene, on the screen. Everything works as what was happening. Um, in the uni editor, so I'm good to go. And I did notice that, you know, uh, because the relative size is different, this AM moved off the clock a lot. I'll fix that in Sprint 3. And then also, if you notice, my paint strokes. Because this window is bigger, the paint strokes actually, wherever X equals 200 is around here, where it used to be around here. And so that's just because I'm using this, this hard-coded number 200, which that number changes based on the size of, of this rectangle. Um, the rendered region. So anyway, the, any, everything for Sprint 2 is great. I, I do have some work to deal with uh, when I get to... Sprint 3, but we'll deal with it then. So I'm happy. I did a local testing. I'm happy with it. I'm going to um, shift click these all. Say I'm using 7-zip. You do whatever, but I'm going to do a zip of it. This is what my zip came out to be, right? Then the next step is let me pull down this window. Um, you're going to upload a new project. You're going to call it something, Sprint 2, whatever. Give some details, description. Do an HTML project. Click Upload Files. All right, you're going to upload your zip. Sure. Let me just show the details of my project I already put up because I already did this. So here's Sprint 2. Let's click Edit the Game. So go down to HTML, upload it, click on, you know, this should be default. If not, click it on. This file will be played in the browser. Just make sure, usually this, they mess with the height a little bit. Just make sure this is at 960 by 600. I um, mean, click on Mobile Friendly because left click will be a touch event now. And that's it. Save it out. Remember, we're going to move from draft to public. But at this point, save it out, test it. If it works, you run the game here. It works great. That's fine. Let's go back to edit game. Make it public. Once you do that, you can copy this link. So this is one piece of information. Um, I think I'm going to save that next part, how to embed it next. So here we are back at here we're going to write out a description it's going to be a paragraph i don't need to do it i did it the first time you write it out next we need to get our diagram out so here's my diagram i happen to have multiple sprints in one area so i have to select what i want to save out so basically i'm selecting this part if everything is good that you want to export out as a jpeg then you don't need to but file export out jpeg i'm going to click selection only crop it if you don't have any additional information that you don't want to bring along, you don't need to do that. Click Export. Click Device. It'll just put it in your Downloads folder. So now I got my JPEG. I'm going to pop back over. And I think I have all the information I need to build this, right? So if you notice here, I got my project description. I got my diagram. I got my big link to build. And I got my embedded code. So one thing to note when I click link to build, it opens up a new window and I'll show you how to do this. This is easiest, so I don't need to overwrite this window and click back. And remember to log out and test your link to make sure that it works for, me, for anybody. So let me go through when you click new forum posting. All right, it'll look something like this. You write out your paragraph and you're gonna click uh, embed image here. You're going to find or upload it, upload the file, right? 
and then click uh, it'll upload take a look at it and it'll be good and it'll look like this and one thing if it's too big too small you can click on it like this and you get some scaling features so let me scroll down a little bit this thing first off open this up so because by default it's like really small try to view more about um, what your link your your posting is going to look like and if you right click on your image and if it's too big you can scale it down if it's too small you can scale it up right or if you um, insert edit image if you wanted to you could type in the numbers here in the dimensions either case make sure the size feels good then we move down you're going to type out capital letters like link to build or something select it all and then you're gonna you're gonna insert the link and so when you do that um, just make sure that it's open a new window so that it pops up a new tab so let's go back here this my game is running this is oops clicking too fast copy this this is the link to your game mine is already published if you're in draft they'll see underneath your secret ul url you're going to use that if you want to stay in draft mode and actually share it but then you paste it in and say open a new window insert we're good our link is good and then next you're going to click this insert html code we're going to go to a project our our um build and I just clicked on widget, go to embed game. This is what we want right here, this iframe here, this code. Just know that the, I don't know why they change this height to 320 all the time. I don't want it super small like that. I'll have to change that later. I'm gonna copy this, paste it, and that needs to be within a paragraph. So before I did this, there was something like, it looked like this. All right, I got my paragraph up here. I got my link to my image, I got my link to my build on itch.io and then you have like this empty paragraph begin paragraph end paragraph paste in this embed code and switch the height to 700 for some it needs to be a little bit more in you know, a default 600 but there's like a little buffer around it or something just put up to 700 you're you're good click update whatever and you'll notice it's like loading up in your example and uh, your example a little your preview window and that's great you click save and so this is what my posting looks like here's my paragraph here's my image here's my embed so I'm going to test out the embed works great wonderful we look like we're doing a great job I'm going to click my link to build notice how it pops up a new tab it doesn't overwrite my current tab that's important because now it's very easy for me to jump around check out student projects and I'm testing out my build link on HIO we're good to go I've talked about some features I'm gonna fix in sprint 3 we're all happy make sure you log out to test your link and here's everything you need project description a paragraph of it here's your diagram images as a JPEG exported out Here's your link to itch.io, opening in a new tab, and here's your embedded project. And that's all that you need to pass through Sprint 2. Again, due at the end of Spring Break.